Hello and welcome back. It's been a minute since I made a video. It's going to be a nice, quick, easy job, as the title suggests. Uh, just going to make a heat sink for the manifolds that I've made for my S4. I've got these sat here. They're all welded up, looking great. But as many of you know, and if you don't know, now it's time for me to weld the flange to the runners if I do not make a heat sink, which I have here, or a chill block, whatever you want to call it. If you don't have these in place, when you run those welds round, one, miles easy for purging if you make one of these, it's easy to purge it, and two, you just wouldn't do it without it because you'll just end up with a, a flange that's all warped, it'll never sit against the head correctly and it'll leak and never make the power that you desire and you'll be taking it off and on. Yeah, you could then, you could weld it without it, you can go take it to a machine shop, get it machined, but let's avoid all that and I'll be honest, There'd be a lot of warpage if I did this without any sort of chill block or bolting it down to a bench or anything. So if you're doing some manifolds or you have got a part that's warping a lot, this is the best thing for you. If you're getting into manifolds, you definitely need one of these. So what you'll need is what I've got here. This does a couple of my uh, manifolds that I make. So this does the Mini Cooper, the Fiat 500 and the 20 valve. I've got it all on one block because there's enough room. This is just a through hole through here that's drilled and tapped that I can put my purge line on which is just a barb so that screws into the end there plug my line onto it and then i can plug the rest up whilst i'm welding same again so just drilled halfway to center and then drilled halfway to center on this and then that allows the gas to pass through great because not only is it keeping it flat i can run the gas through getting no horribleness on the inside of this. No sugar in and oxidization on the inside because it's purged properly and correctly. And then there's no bits flying off and damaging some expensive turbos. So I've got two sizes in front of me here. These are just ordered from a local supplier. Only cheap, they're about 20 pound each or something like that. So this is just a 400 mil by inch, which is 25 mil. And then I've got 300 by inch, which I'm gonna be making the 2.7 v6 manifold heatsink for so yeah let's get it all marked out get it done rapid can we just take a second though to look at some of them welds Oof. love it absolutely love it can't wait to get these on there engine's just been sat on that box over there for time need to take the valve covers off and clean them all up and of course the uh s4 still sat there but want to get this finished for as soon as possible so i can make a good start on my TT. Cold in here today, as you can tell, waiting for some parts for some customers' cars that are coming. So I've got three morning to get this done. New camera lens as well. Stuff's gonna look a lot crispier, focused on make, making more content for everyone this year. Hit a thousand subscribers so we can start earning money off the video soon once I hit a certain amount of views. So let's keep going and push forward. All you need, doesn't need to be perfect. Just grab the flange that you're going to be using center it up a little bit get it somewhere in the middle i am just going to get a square and get it set just from the bottom there just to make it look nice and even the holes for now maybe i'll just mark a couple of them because i'll use a center punch so i'll mark say that one drill that or just drill that tap that and then what I'll do is I'd, I'll mark it with the, the right size drill bit. So next what you want to do is now you've marked them holes, just find the center of them, so that, that hole size, which is, this is actually a 40 mil, so 20 mil there. Get your square, all the way down, of course, because we're going to cross that down. We're going to bring that line down the edge as well, because we want to drill from center down here spin it around so you can actually see and then scrap that line across same again we're going to want 20 in this direction of course make it perfect and then i'll just get a hole punch and i'll mark that off So that's that, just gonna go find my hole punch and a hammer. I've got about 10 hammers in the unit and this is the only one I can find. I don't know why I was calling it a hole punch, I meant center punch. So, just mark them for center. So now I've just fetched 
the drill that I'm going to be using and a tap. This is 1 8 BSP because they're the fittings that I've got that go in the end of these. Let's keep them all the same. Um, like I say, just use the center punch to mark these out so the drill won't follow nicely. So let's go take that over to my pillar drill and cut the drill those out. So you can do these holes by hand if you wanted to, but I'm not going to because I've got the drill. Um, just want to keep nice and square. Square as you can, so you can go on wandering off. Always nice to check the drill is square, which is not is no better than what it was. I'll do. That's all the purge stuff done. So now I've just got to drill one hole and tap it, and then I can bolt it right down. And then what I'll do is I'll just get the right size drill bits and just drill through that. Gonna do these by hand, don't need the pillar drill, just do it with a combi drill to show that you can just do this anywhere. It's aluminium, drills nice and easy. Roughly, you know what? Move that out of the way. So I've just drilled a seven mil hole in that and I'm just going to tap it throw this on here bolt that nice and tight there we go that's not moving now so that's that bolted down can't move this what you can use is they make a thing called a center punch and what a centre punch does, it'll be the same size as your hole size. So say this is a 10mm hole, um, and then it'll come to a point. So you put it in, you can just hammer them down. Don't know where my centre punches have gone. What I'm going to do is get the drill bit that matches the same size as that. Just going to put it through, touch in, and then that'll give my drill bit, the 7mm drill bit for the, the drill and the tap. Something to follow and be in the right position. So just going to mark all these out, drill all them out quickly. So there we go, you'll have some nice little divots, dimples that allow the 7mm bit just to follow its way, way through and it's not going to be all over the place if you just marked it with a marker. So I've got all the holes drilled now ready for tapping. I don't know if you'll be able to see this but you can see how nice that hole's been drilled. So that was with cutting oil and then if you can see this one inside there not as nice and it doesn't look nowhere near as straight and that is because when it heats up it chatters a lot and it'll do this when it gets warm yeah you can see how rough it is there yeah look at that but if you've got cutting lube or anything like that it's cutting oil just give it a little spray on the end it doesn't need a lot but you come out with a, a, a better hole and it'll be more dimensionally accurate with a bit of oil on it Sink all the holes. So that's all the holes drilled in the chill bot now. Now I just need to quickly throw it on. We're going to bolt it down and I'll just run through bolting it down. Some people have a sequence, you know, tightening it up and then once it's cooled down, uh, they have a sequence to start from the centre and work their way out. I'll be honest, I've tried every single way, not noticed any difference. Leave it to fully chill on the block, not still warm to the touch. It's absolutely room temperature if not if it's room temperature in here right now it's zero degrees so you know what that feels like metal's cold at this temperature so wait until it's gone cold don't try and speed up the process don't try and accelerate it by blowing air on it just leave it to do its natural thing and that's what i found works best for me you might have other ways but works great for me so 
let's get it bolted down and then yeah let's quickly weld it up and i'll show you what this looks like welded up so for me i've got a load of these high tensile a socket cap so i can fasten them from the inside and i've just got the right size allen key bit and then i just put a 10 mil over the top so i can get into these tight spaces so when i'm welding these as well when i'm passing past this i usually take this bolt out so that way i'm not gonna you know catch it with my tungsten or whatever pass to about halfway put the bolt back in take this one out and then i'll run that weld past the bolt to about center here and then i'll put the bolt back in and tighten it down and then do that for all these and then obviously just let it sit and chill so let's just see if what i've done here is correct oh yeah bloody beautiful get them all in hand tight loose so if you start from the center and then you bolt this down in the set those three bolts here that i've got and then you find that the flange starts coming up away this will then pull it down but if you start from this end you might end up with sort of an arch in the center and then you're pulling it down and then you could add some smaller gaps in here in theory but it's always work from your center and work out on on these flanges um but like i say when you're lucid enough i've heard people talk nonsense saying no you know start from that start from this bolt to this bolt to that bolt and don't worry about it once it's fully cool it's cool just let it let it do its thing there's a reason that we're bolting it it's this piece of aluminium so i'm just going to start on these first three here definitely work from your scent when tightening this down um, it wants to be quite tight so that's why i use a nice chunk of aluminium and a good size bolt remember it is aluminium as well so don't be wrenching on it too much that's tight enough for me don't forget the gasket does do a lot but you want to get this as flat as you can so what i'll do is i'll touch it on the linisher after i've welded it up as well so there's the chill block, all done, bolted down. So I just need to put the purge line in each runner when I when I do it. So I'll just put this barb in in there. What I'll do is I'll cap these off with a bit of tin foil, and as the argon's heavier than air, I don't want it to pass through here and then start coming out of here. It's okay for some to leave here, but I want it to continue up and out, pushing the oxygen out this way. So if you block block these obviously it'll take the path over and out um yeah so remember that argon is heavier than air so if you are pumping it up through here you know it will leave just make sure you plug them a little bit let a little bit drain out so i have one bit of straight tungsten and then a piece that i've bent so what i'll do is i'll just stick that in the vise downwards like this and then i just pass i'd tap the pedal on that until it glows red and then i'd bend it across and it's really good for getting in the tight spaces if you need to so you can get round the round the side of the runner it's gonna be all right with this i think but it's always good to have knocked up ready to go and then one just for the end here it's not good a bit more. honestly don't sleep on the tin foil and then once that's done just put a couple of holes in just to let the air pass through Get rid of the oxygen that's stuck inside so what i'll do is i'll just turn it on give it a quick blast let's turn it to about there perfect start on this corner here This is where I meant you might need the bent tungsten because when you when it arcs round, it's getting in focus. 
this will bend round and it'll arc off it and it'll come off in that direction rather than going straight so as I get into this corner so I'm holding it off to the side here but the arc direction would be going straight instead it's going with the bent tungsten it'll start to bend round and arc in so I'll get a better penetration in that corner That's how that weld turned out, looks really nice all the way around, happy with that. So I'll do the other two off camera and then we'll have a look at it all welded together and see what that looks like. So that's the first manifold all done and dusted. I'll flip the camera around and we'll have a look at how well those have welded up. Came out great, super happy with those. Right now it is very hot to the touch and like I said just leave it in this so it's nice and cold. Oof, look at the state of that. Both of them. Oh. Oh. Super happy with how that's turned out. Like I say, you can look down there. Stay nice and true and flat. And then I'll hit it on that linisher over there that I've got and just try and get it as flat as possible. But like I say, gasket takes up most of the slack. Beautiful all the way around. Like I said, just taking that bolt in and out just to get past. Super happy with how those are looking. So once that one's cooled down, yeah, like I say, still very hot to the touch. So let that do its thing, stick the other one in, and then we'll have a look when they're finished. So now that's nice and cold, freezing to the touch. I've had lunch and I've waited. And she's looking crispy. Let's get it unbolted from the flange. Looks lovely and flat. Bosh. State of it. Touch that on the linisher. She's good to go. So, yeah, mint. Don't think I can ramble on about heat sinks anymore. So, I'm going to call this an end to the video. I've still got another one to make for the flange that meets the turbo just to stop that from warping. So, off camera, going to get them all finished off and ready to bolt to the engine. Going to go pick up some parts that way I can finish the engine and get them all bolted and get the turbos mounted. So, I'll cover all that in the next video and we'll start going through it. Some other bits that I need to start doing on the S4. Still needs quite a bit of work, still wants downpipes making, still wants the full exhaust. But yeah, it's getting, we're coming out of winter now and I'm getting bored of driving slow boring cars now. I missed having a bit of noise on the road. So get this done, hopefully get it mapped and aim for 500 brake and then we can start on the big turbo build which is sat behind me. So 700 and odd brake if you're, the, if you're new to this channel. So yeah, going to push to make a lot more content this year and definitely going to document the TT and I really do want to start that soon. Let's get the S4 boxed off. Hopefully you can join me for all the builds and yeah, if there's anything else that you want to see, let me know. So if you made it to the end of the video, just want to say thank you. Uh, give us a like, comment down below because it really does help the video. Now we're over a thousand subscribers. We'll be able to monetize the account soon and yeah, just need them watch hours to get up. So if you've not watched any of my stuff before, make sure you go back. Go ahead, just click on some, leave it on in the background just to help me get my view hours up if you're feeling generous. So yeah, more content coming soon. Get that S4 done rapid. Nice one for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.